Let's make a confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. I was driving around this week, and uh, I was coming off of an alleyway into the main street. And there were far enough distance between me and the car, so I made the right turn into the main, main way. And I was on my lane, and after a few seconds of catching up to me, the, uh, the car started honking. He, I guess he was angry that I got in front of him for some reason. I don't know. I didn't, he didn't have to slow down or he didn't have to hit the brakes because of my, my turn. I didn't do anything wrong to the guy, but he was very, very angry. He pulled up side of me and then the light turned red and he rolled down his window. And he was very angry at me. So I rolled down my window. <laughs> and I just simply looked at him. <laughs> and then he just rolled back his window <laughs> and then he dro drove out. Um, I guess because Corona, a lot of people are angry nowadays. But don't edit your life with anger because it might catch up with you. <laughs> uh, we need to edit our life, as Konzi uh, as mentioned, as, as Elizabeth prayed. We need to edit our life with the gospel. Amen? Every day, whatever is going on in your life, whatever you're thinking about, whatever giving you hardship, edit your life with the gospel. Gospel says Jesus is a Christ, the answer to all of our problems. What are you going through right now? If the gospel is implied to that area, God will turn it into an amazing evidence. So today we're talking about the way of salvation. And as you may say, I've heard this before. <laughs> you may say, I've heard this many times. You may have. <laughs> uh, but it's not about hearing how many times. It's about personalizing. It's about being a witness of this gospel message that God has given to us. God sent Christ to save us. And we need to understand the blessing that is within the work that God has done to save us, the way of salvation. And along that way, all the answers are recorded there. Along the path, all the evidence God you need is, is right there that you need. So today I pray that you will receive this message into your heart. You know, God didn't just simply create chaos. He created in a very, very specific order. If you look at the creation order, God creates the earth, God creates the sky, the, the ground, the water, and then what he begins to do? He begins to fill it with creatures. He build, if there is no sky, if there's no air for the birds to fly around, then the birds cannot survive. If there is no water for the fishes to swim, there's, they cannot survive. If there is no ground for the trees to be planted, guess what? It's not going to work. So God creates things in a very specific creational order, right? Not chaos. Chaos happened because of sin. Because of our sin, chaos began happening on earth. Why is there so much pain? Why are there diseases? COVID-19. There was no COVID-19 before the fall. Before the sin, there was no cold you didn't catch any diseases. There's no pain. All these things happen after the fall. Chaos happened after the fall. So God creates the air. In Genesis 1, 20, he says this. Let the birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. That's how God meant the birds to live, to fly in the sky. You ever have uh, pet birds? People who like to have pet birds. What do they put them in? In a small cage. They can flap the wings maybe twice and they hit the top. <laughs> and they just walk around. Their wings are going to just fall off on these birds because they're not using it. Birds are meant to fly. They're meant to fly in the sky. They got to move and flap their wings. And that's how they're healthy. These birds, the pet birds don't live a long time. You know? <laughs> they die really quickly because that's not how they're meant to live. It says in Genesis 1.28, later on, it says here, let the water team with living creatures. God creates the water, and what does he put in there? Living creatures, such as fish. Fishes were born as God created to live in the water. You're not supposed to jump out of the <laughs> water and fly away. You don't see any fish doing that. There's a, uh, there's a glide fish of some sort. They, they jump out of the water and they flap some kind of tail, and they kind of glide for a little bit. There are such fish like that, but they're not birds. <laughs> they're going to go back into the water. 
So God creates the ground. In Genesis 1 verse 11, it says, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. So God creates the ground and plants trees and seeds. This is how all things are meant to be. So the point I'm making to you guys, you need to live according to the way God meant you to live, right? Anything outside of the creation order will suffer and die in that chaos. God creates man. In Genesis 1, verse 26, it reads this. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. He says here, let us make mankind in our own image. The Trinity, God speaks. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit says, let us create them in our own image, creating them with the image of God, the Spirit, the soul, that has, gives us the right to have a relationship with God. Relationship with God. That's how God created you guys, every single one of you, us humans. If you're a human being listening to this message, you need Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're not a human being, you don't have to watch this anymore. If you're a human being, God says he created us in his own image to live in, in the blessing of Emmanuel with God. Not only that, to do what? Rule over the birds, rule over the fish, rule over the creatures of the earth. You are to rule and conquer is how God created you to be. Now, as we know, the moment we step out of this creation order, what happens? Chaos, darkness, void, problems, issues only takes place, place just as the fish cannot live out of the water. Suffering, suffering, suffering. You catch a fish, you put him in a nice house, put him in, give him a nice car, put him in a nice clothes, give, buy him a, a brand, you know, clothing. The fish will die. You understand? Fish cannot be happy. It will suffer and suffer and suffer and die. It may die in a comfortable bed if you place it in a nice place. It may die in a comfortable car, but the suffering cannot be resolved. Creational order is an important teaching method God gives us from the beginning. Happiness only comes for us when we are together with God. Now, this is the creational order. This is how God meant us to be. And just so you know that, you know, human beings were created as the last part of creation. Do you know that? At the last part of creation. Do you know why? To point to you that all of which this whole universe was created for you. Amen? Amen. God created this beautiful world for you. For you. Because he loves you. Because he cares for you. He gave us everything that we need. That's the blessing that God has. What kind of heart does God have? God wants to give you everything. That's the heart of a parent. He wants to give you the best thing, the most beautiful thing. And he has. right? But what happened? A problem arises, as we know. This thing called, as we, as we say, this fundamental problem, it is inescapable. This trap Satan sets, this snare, this frame, now that we're apart, we're stuck in, it's inescapable. We cannot escape it. That's, that's the strength of original sin. You cannot resolve it on your own. You cannot break away. Ever seen an animal caught in a snare? When you're hunting animals in the wild, you look for trails where animals go. And you, as you find the trails, because animals keep to a track. They, they don't usually veer off on other tracks that they're not used to going. They're always, so you can kind of tell the track. So the hunt, hunters, would they set a trap right there on the, on the trap. They set a, a, a food that they, they like. They rope it around some kind of trap or they dig the ground and they get caught by it. When they get caught in a snare, what happened? They cannot move. They're stuck. Whether their arms or limbs are stuck, whether they're falling into a hole, they cannot go out. That's their world now. The moment we are separated from God, we are caught in a trap that we cannot come out from. And yet we're telling them, hey, come out. <laughs> hey, do better. What's wrong with you? I'm caught in a trap. That's the reality of mankind. 
people are caught in a trap. Satan comes to the scene, Genesis 3, 1 to 5. What his, his greatest weapon Satan uses? It is unbelief. Unbelief, guys. Unbelief is the weapon of choice for Satan. What does he do? God gave us a clear command. And yet, what does Satan do? He puts unbelief into our hearts. When God said, if you, if, you, if you eat from this tree of knowledge, good and evil, you will surely die. Along the way, the covenant was gone. She didn't believe. Adam didn't believe. Unbelief crept in. Unbelief is his greatest weapon. And his method of putting unbelief into their heart is selfishness. You know, when you, when you look at people who are going through hardships, what do they say? They always speak as, I can't do it right i don't know what to do i can't overcome this the focus is on self what makes me happy right this makes me happy that's why they do it well, same thing look at the words of satan if you eat from this series you can be like god knowing good and evil satan attacked through selfishness self-centeredness he wants to only look at yourself. Look, look at you. Do what's better for you. Do what makes you happy. Avoid things that doesn't make you happy. That's what Satan wants you to do. Satan's greatest weapon is unbelief. And his method in implying that method is selfishness, centeredness, self-centeredness. We are to live as what? God-centered lives. Amen? That's the only way you can be happy, guys. As Paul says, Galatians says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. If you don't live, how can you complain about anything about yourself? Or what you have, what you don't have, when you, when you say, I don't live. When you take yourself out of the equation, Satan has nothing to deceive you with anymore. Do you understand? Only thing left in your heart is the plan of God. The gospel God gave. God's plan. And you're living for these things. Satan cannot deceive you. You now become like... Superman, <laughs> right? unbreakable, unstoppable. That's a child of God, spiritual Superman, amen? Satan comes on the scene, deceives Adam and Eve, causing mankind to sin. And we call this original sin. As Romans 3.20 says, for there's no one righteous, I'm sorry, Romans 3.10 says, there's no one righteous, not even one, not even one. Why? Because all have sinned before, the God, before God and show, fall short for the glory of God. Everyone has now fallen into sin. Now, when we talk about sin, we talk about in action of what you did, what you didn't do, what you thought, and all these things. But when the Bible talks about sin, it talks about in a state of sin. It talks about an identity. It doesn't say you're, you've sinned. It says you are a sinner. Okay? Because the, the word is, you already have sinned. The moment you are birthed, even in the, in your, in, conceive in your mother's womb, you are, you are born in sin. Sinful life, we call it as we are sinners, we are born unto this world. As sin takes place, as a result of that sin, what's the conclusion? Separation from God. All right? What are the three fundamental problems then? Because of Satan, we sinned against God, and as a result, what happened? We are separated from God. Just as a child who are born is separated from his mother will never be happy. I mean, yes, not having a father around is a problem, but no, if you have a, if you have a mother, I mean, I've, I, really, I can really tell by looking at my kids. You know, when, when I'm here, they say, oh, Appa's here, oh, they love you, oh, bo -bo, mo -mo, okay? But when they're going to sleep, and when they wake up, when they're really, really like hurt or something like that, who they look for? Mommy. If daddy comes to hug them, he, they push me away like I'm some kind of you know, a burglar or something. Like, bah, punches me in the face. Get away from me. Right? But only, they only want the mother. Right? A child separated from his mother. That's a curse, isn't it? For us, mankind, we are separated from our God, the creator God, that is the curse of all curse. You just, separation itself, you just leave it around, that, that, that person, that being is now separated from in the creation order. No choice but to have suffering constantly over and over again. 
in that kind of state, how can a person be happy? It cannot. There is no happiness to a person who is separated from God. A sin that you cannot resolve, now you are a slave to Satan. This is what we call your identity now. This is your identity. Identity of being called a sinner. Identity of being called as a child of Satan. Identity of people being now, uh, uh, now a part of hell. That's the identity every single person is born into after original sin. How severe is original sin? Not only now are you in a, in a sinful state, there are things, problems that constantly follow you. The state of the unsaved. Now, not only are you in an inescapable trap, a frame that's set by Satan, now you're in an inescapable faith and destiny. A faith and destiny controlled by Satan now, right? A movie now, a role, script written out by Satan in which you live in as the main character. And that movie is not a happy ending movie. It's a movie about suffering. It's a movie about pain. And a pain that goes on to eternity, right? What kind of state is that? First state is the state of being a child of the devil. You're spiritually, your identity is a child of the devil. You become a slave of Satan. That's the point in which every single starting, all people are, is their starting point. Their starting point is that they're child of the devil. That's what we call spiritual problem, guys. Spiritual problem. Do you ever wonder about yourself what's wrong with me <laughs> about a certain e area in your life or about a certain habit you may have what's wrong with me this is what's wrong with you you were born in spiritual identity of being called child of satan we have these leftovers even as a children of god that satan still tried to deceive us in spiritual problems what happens when you fall into spiritual problems the issues and problems that we have, the best that we came up with in trying to resolve our problem is what? Idol worship. <laughs> That's the best human beings came up with. Let's make a religion. Let us make some kind of idol, a, a mediator so that we can go to God. You know, uh, I was moving to a new place just recently, last year, and I was calling in to find a moving company, right? And certain dates were so expensive. And then this one day, it was very cheap, like half price. So I asked, he's like, why is it so cheap on this day? He says, it's certain uh, mystical day, it's some mystical day for Koreans, where they believe on certain days, demons don't work, right? On certain days, demons are at work, so on those days, people don't like to move because demons are at work. <laughs> when demons are at work, you're not supposed to move. So the moving companies have nothing to do. So if, if any dumb person like me were dumb enough to move on that day, they would, they would bring half price and they brought their best workers. I mean, I've moved uh, quite a few times in Korea. And there are usually some very reluctant in their work. They don't like doing it. They just kind of throw things around. But these guys were young, strong, and they were just so happy to help out. I was like, wow, you guys are the best moving companies. He said, well, none of us have anything to do. Nobody's moving today. As in Koreans, 손 없는 나, they say. <laughs> so I got a very cheap price for, for this moving company. You know, for children of God, I can move any day. You know that? <laughs> uh, certain Koreans don't like a, a house that faces a certain direction. I don't care. I don't care about what direction it is, what kind of demons move in. I don't care. <laughs> I'm a child of God. I can live anywhere because I bring the light of Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the blessing we have as children of God. For non-believers, they're caught up in idol worship. They're caught up in a spiritual issue and trap that they cannot come out from. Every religion, they make certain religions, they worship idols. Every religion is worshiping Satan. Do you understand? Every religion. There's no good in religion. They, for the purpose of good, Satan has trapped, that has made this covering around the religion saying it's a good thing, and then leading people to hell. That's what Satan does. When you're in that kind of issue, what happens? People fall into mental problems. Mental problems. Mental problem isn't just people going to mental hospitals. 
mentally, there are more mentally suffering people currently living among us, right, on, on the streets than in the mental hospitals. Mental hospitals don't have any rooms anymore. Do you know that? I did a lot of, uh, um, in my college, when I was uh, in my theological studies, I did um, nursing home ministries. Nursing homes supposed to be old people going there. Well, here, nursing homes, there are a lot of young people there, people in their 30s. And so I ask around, why are they here? I thought nursing homes were supposed to be old people. No, their answer, there is no more room in the mental hospital. So the, the government started sending them into nursing homes. Nursing homes. Mental problems, anxiety, depression, addiction, stress. Some people take drastic measures and taking their own lives, suicide, or even causing other people to die and hurting other people, doing crazy things. Where are all these things came from? Because mental problems. Mentally suffering in their minds that no one can give them answer to. Apart from Christ, there is no solution. You understand, guys? Apart from Christ, there is no solution to your mental stress apart from Christ. Apart from Christ, no matter what you do, no matter what you try to find to resolve your problem, nothing is going to be good enough apart from Christ. <clears throat> Not only that, they into physical problems. Mentally stressed out, they live a life that is worthless, unbalanced kind of lives that leads to a broken physical body. Not only are they physically in pain, but their life is being used for physically doing sinful things. That's the kind of life that people live. Physical problems. After physical problems, what awaits? Death and judgment. Hebrews 9.27 reads this, Just as people are destined to die once, and after that face judgment. Every single person will die one day. I can make a prophecy. Right? All of you will die one day. All of you. Everyone watching this video will die one day. I don't know when that day will be. There will be. And after, the, after death, what awaits, as the Bible says? Judgment awaits. Judgment awaits. What's important, guys? What's urgent in people's lives? What is it? I was talking to someone yesterday, and he's in tears. He's telling me about his relational problems with a person that he's dating. He's in tears and all these things. He's like, how can she do that to me? <laughs> He's crying. I'm just sitting there trying to listen to him. He's like, oh, okay. So it's going to be okay. It's okay. <laughs> trying to comfort him. I don't know if I can comfort him. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's crying. He's like, okay. <laughs> but inside, I'm thinking, you're going you're gonna to cry even more. <laughs> Why? Because this guy doesn't care about the gospel. She, the person that he dated doesn't care about the gospel, right? They met, playing around in the world, you know, partying somewhere, they met. Okay, they like each other, they met. They started dating, they lived their life. What else did you expect? <laughs> That's what I wanted to tell him. <laughs> I didn't tell him that because he might put a stake in his heart. I didn't know that. I said, oh, God will help you, yeah. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> but I really wanted to tell him what? Uh, it's because of your lifestyle, right, that led you to that point. May that be a starting point which you start correctly. I mean, think about it. In that kind of lifestyle, how can you find any comfort, any answer? You cannot, right? What is urgent, guys? There's nothing more urgent than the gospel. There's nothing more important than the gospel. All are for nothing, guys. Everyone needs the gospel, only thing that is important is the gospel. Gospel, gospel. Why? Because not only is your life going to end up in hell, in judgment, but after my problem gets passed down to my children, after children, after children. At least we shouldn't do that, right? I mean, at least. Do you know what it says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 6 and 7? It talks about, but blessing to a thousand generation of those that believe in faith, okay? Not only their curse passed down the third and fourth generation, God says, but I will bless down to a thousand generation because of your faith, amen? That's what we want to leave behind our future generation, right? The faith of, that you have enjoyed in the gospel in Jesus Christ because if I don't, my spiritual problem gets relayed down to my 
son after children after children on on and on and on. They go into this never-ending cycle that they can never come out from. And no matter how much you try to come out from this frame, to come out this, from this faith and destiny, no matter how much religion you believe in, no matter how much good works you try to do, no matter how much books you try to read, it doesn't matter because it will never be good enough. For all have sinned fall short of the glory of God. Right? I mean, think of it. Every time you try something and you fall short, you know, people say, oh, effort's everything. Yes, effort is important. Doing your best is important. But not when it comes to eternity, okay? Not when it comes to eternity. Good enough is not good enough. Would you bet your eternity on good enough? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. If I was like, you know, making a dinner <laughs> and it didn't come out the way I wanted it. My parent, wife would say, oh, you did try. It's okay. Good enough. <laughs> I'll eat it. That's fine. But would you do that to your eternity? God's going to say, oh, that was good enough. But nope, hell, <laughs> sorry. No, guys. We will never do that with eternity. We will never do that with the people's lives that you love. You will never do that. God gave us a clear answer. What we have is not good enough. The state that you're falling into, well, you can never come out from. So therefore, God gives us the one and only answer. And that answer is Christ. Amen? Uh, Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen? God did not say, so what do you need, guys? How can I help you? <laughs> he, said, he saw us in utter distress. He saw us in an absolute curse and condemnation that we cannot save ourselves in, called sin. So God demonstrates how he much he loves us by sending his one and only son to die on the cross. That's it. That's why in our verse in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, says that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life. This is God's method. To send his one and only son to us. To save us. In Revelation 3.20 it says he's knocking on our doors of our hearts. If you open your hearts he will come in. He will dine with us. In John 1.12. Yet to those who believe and accept in his name. God says I have given you the right to be called children of God. And out of human beings mouth. As we confess every Sunday in Matthew 16.16. 16, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. You are the one Messiah that we've been waiting for. You are the one and only answer to save us from the problem of original sin. Make that confession every day. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's the combination of the entire Bible. If you ring out, ring out the Bible and a drop of gospel drops, and if you read it, it will say, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen? That's the gospel confession that we make. You know, it says in Proverbs 27, 1, don't boast about your tomorrow because you never know what a day may bring. When is the right time for you to hold on to this gospel? Right now, right? When is the time for you to be equipped with the word of God? Right now, because you never know what tomorrow waits. Satan's roaming around looking for someone to devour constantly. That's what Satan does. So how, what do we need to be? We need to be spiritually ready every single day, right now, not tomorrow. When do you start dieting? Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. No, right now. Right now. Right? I always say tomorrow. I was like, oh, my last meal, and then on tomorrow. And then tomorrow I say, oh, it's Monday, so okay, one more meal with the family on Tuesday. Tuesday comes. You can't start diet on a Tuesday. Right? Okay, I'll wait another week. So that I do. Right? Then it goes, Pesh, but no. Every day, starting with the gospel, right now, guys, right now. God has given us one and only answer called Christ the Anointed One. He came as the true king. The reason Son of God came was to destroy the devil's work. What did Christ do? He crushed the serpent's head. Crushed it. Absolutely crushed it. 
Just as if you would step on a can, aluminum can, after you drunk it, right? You drink a can, can, can of Coke, and you, you, you crush the can. What happens to can? Flattens out. Flattens out. Imagine, imagine that's Satan's head, guys. Go home today and crush down a can. My homework to you, right? And say, hey, that's your head, Satan. Amen? Amen? Amen. Don't be afraid of Satan. Why? Because Christ... He already resolved the problem. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the force of darkness. Why? Christ came and destroyed the devil's work. Amen? His authority of the children of God is broken. He has no power. He has no authority over you. He doesn't have the right to tell you anything. He doesn't have the right to force you to do anything. He doesn't. But what he's good at is what? He lies. <laughs> he deceives. He likes to put little crumbs on the trails. So that you follow that instead of the following the word of God. Let us be bold. You are children of God. Amen? God sent us Christ the Anointed One as the true priest. Romans 8.2 Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Law free, freed. You are freed. No longer does God call you sinner. No longer are you in a state of a sinner. You are called righteous, holy. God sees the blood of Jesus Christ in your heart. Amen? Amen. That cleansed us. Jesus comes as a Christ, sets us free from the snare of Satan. Sets us free from the trap of Satan. The frame of sin, he has absolutely freed us. He came as a Christ, the true anointed one, as the true prophet. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, Jesus says. You may say, I don't know what to do. You may have this question about yourself sometimes. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to resolve this. What am I supposed to do? You know what Jesus says? I am the way, Jesus says. That's all you have to remember. You don't have to know. You just need to trust that Jesus is the one and only way. Amen? Not, not knowing, not having an answer versus not knowing the answer is a different thing. You understand? If there is no answer, it doesn't matter what you believe, there is no answer. It doesn't matter who you believe, there is no answer. But if there is an answer, the one who gives us the answer, who is the way, which is Jesus Christ, and yet I don't know what his answer is, it's okay. Why? Because the one who is the answer is with you. He promises, I'm going to guide you. I'm going to work in your life so you don't have to worry about it. I will reveal it to you through the word of God. Have confidence in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You are children of God. Jesus is the one and only way. Amen? Amen. One and only way. <clears throat> Because I have this confidence in believing he is the one and only way, Satan cannot deceive me. You understand? Satan cannot deceive me with a problem. Satan cannot deceive me with an issue. He cannot. Because I have the one and only way walking with me side by side every day in my life. And what, what is he walking me to? He wants me to be a witness of Jesus Christ. He wants me to go proclaim the gospel so that others would know this truth. Because people are blind. People, are ears are covered. They don't know what's going on. They don't know if there is an answer. They really don't. So God calls us to be a witness of Jesus Christ. You know, my life was led by evangelism. That's why I'm here. Truly led by evangelism. God, after receiving salvation, after receiving grace from God, God just simply began opening doors of evangelism, and I just simply followed it all the way up to here. All the, I'm here because of that. And everywhere evangelism took place, just God just started changing my life. Right? So evangelism is something that you do. Evangelism is something that God opens the door to you as you enjoy the gospel. Right? So for that to take place, we got to understand this gospel, personalized gospel. I told you about my first time sharing the gospel to my cousin, having a family dinner. He comes up to me, why is there so much bad things happening to good people? 
talking about his friend. So I shared the gospel to my cousin. He accepted Christ. A week later, I get a call from that friend that is going through hardship. I shared the gospel with her phone. She accepted Jesus Christ. We started having Bible study in a restaurant. In a restaurant where they, where they, where they, where they smoke cigarettes. You got, you know, you see, I don't, there, there isn't one in Korea. It's, it's called a hookah bar. Hookah bar. <laughs> and this flavored tobacco. You sit there in a the couch and they, they smoke these things. And he wants to have a Bible study there. I was like, okay, sure. Why not? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> We're having Bible study there. And after a couple of weeks, we're there. He calls his friends. Hey, I'm, he get a phone call. Hey, where are you? Oh, I'm here. Oh, we're coming over. Eight of them came. We're sitting in this place, all ten of us. And I told them, hey, we're having a Bible study. You guys can join. <laughs> okay, they're just all kind of like, sitting there like this. What's going on here? Uh, all ten of them. I just, you know, share the gospel. And it just so happens, even though I'm, I'm kind of like seeing them with my peripheral vision, I can tell that kind of they're listening. So I boldly share the gospel. Right? Everyone needs Jesus Christ. Right? <laughs> Would you guys like to accept Jesus Christ? They go, sure. <laughs> and they all accepted Jesus Christ. In that place, we kept having Bible study week after week after week. About like 15 of us in a hookah bar restaurant. <laughs> the, the waiter always looked at me like... They're usually Muslims. <laughs> they all look at me like, what are these Christians over here doing Bible studies in my restaurant? They might, you know, those, they might break my tire or something. Uh, I went to a hospital where I was working. God began opening doors events, shared many times. But, but not only did people suffering accept that you got doctors, nurses accept that Jesus Christ. In where where I live, in the nursing home, I mean, in the in the hospital, in between cases, when we have 15, 20 minutes, I would take the gospel and we would have Bible studies, right? People knew me now as wow, Pastor Tom. Even even back then, right? They would call me Pastor Tom, right? When I entered that hospital, I was a non-believer, Tom. And then along the path, God changing, school, uh, Muslim friends accepting Jesus Christ, right? Uh, people in my classmates accept Jesus Christ. Of course, having Bible studies all over my campuses. My old friends, God opening doors of evangelism. And then now, after seeing those things, evidence taking place in my life, then I now literally find having evangelism camp into college campuses. In this one college campus where we had evangelism camp, I still talk to these people. They're all non-believers. And I share the gospel to them. We raised up a Christian club. 30 of us in a Christian club in a college campus. Every week we meet, we met. These weren't my church members. These are all non-believers that I met at the school. 30 of us having uh, Bible studies. Uh, they're from a, they formed a multi-ethnic club. There was a multi-ethnic club for kids from different countries. They, they already had a group. All of them just simply came to my Christian club. I still talk to them nowadays. You know, once in a while, you can give them a, a text and seeing how they're doing. They're living a pretty good life. <clears throat> My life was led through evangelism, guys. Everything is in the power of the gospel. Amen? Don't worry about what's taking place. Restore worship. Restore prayer. And God will open doors of evangelism in your life. You will be a witness of Jesus Christ. Amen? When that takes place... Not only now is your life changed as a child of God, God gives you a blessing of what it means to be a child of God. Two areas that we can take. God is with you, guiding you, and working in your life. Amen? We call this indwelling, guidance, working of the Holy Spirit. This is your now new identity. New identity. What do you have to worry about? If God says, I'm with you, I'm going to guide you, I'm going to work in your life, what do you have to worry about? Wherever you go, God says, I will bind the forces of darkness. I will send my angels to aid you. You will be used for the blessing of world evangelization. The background of heaven itself will be for you to take care of you. Amen? This is your authority. Identity and authority in which you get to enjoy in your life. You got nothing to worry about. In conclusion, where do you belong? Where? In a state of non-believer or as a child of God, right? Where, remember where you belong. 
You are a child of God. Amen? You don't belong in that area anymore. That's not a world that I'm a part of anymore. You are a new creation, God calls us. New creation. Not something old, made into new. You are an absolutely new creation. Child of God. Amen? So therefore, edit your life with the gospel until you come to the conclusion of only Jesus. If something scarred you, edit it over and over and over again until you come to the conclusion of only Jesus. I'm telling you, God will restore thanksgiving in your heart, even despite what's going on in your life. That's the power of the gospel. God will give you a unique answer. When you come to the answer of only Jesus, God will give only to you a unique answer in your life so that through you, people will be saved. I mean, everywhere I went, I realized something. You know what I realized? That God can only save this place through me. That's what I realized. It kind of sounds very selfish, prideful, right? But that's the reality. I realized when I opened my spiritual eyes, the hospital that I worked in, the school that I attended, the people, the friends that I have, no one around them to share the gospel. No one. I've confirmed it in the field. I told you, asked you guys, may I go talk to a Christian, those who confirm that they are Christian, and talk about these things. Will they know these things? No, they will not. They will not be able to tell you these things. Who will God use? Who can God use? You guys. Amen? You will be a unique answer for God to use. Just as Joseph received the uniqueness, so people had to come to Joseph. Even the Pharaoh had to come to Joseph. All of the people in hunger had to come to Joseph to buy rice from Joseph. He received the answer of uniqueness. And at the evidence, God will give you evidence of recreation. Understand? What is recreation? God will literally recreate who you are. You have changed, right? Recreation. And because of you, the field will change. Recreation. For the sake of the gospel. <clears throat> Whatever people say it is impossible, God will change by the power of the gospel. Amen? Don't listen to people's words. Listen to the word of God. Don't believe in people's words. Believe in the word of God. Amen? Amen. I know I went a little over today. Why? Because I wanted to. Because this is a very important message. What I want to tell you guys, this message, you know, right now, what's the best method to evangelize nowadays? It's through media, right? Through media. Why? Would, so take this message, right? Just hold on to the, the button and it will call copy, okay? And then just go drag it out, press it, and paste, right? And send. That's all you have to do. Amen? Evangelism and say, I love you and I want you to receive salvation, right? Listen to this message. With a heartfelt message, just write a couple words. I really hope that you will listen to the message and God can change your heart through this message, right? Send them, send it all out. Send it out to the world, amen? amen. That's the blessing that we get to have. Way of salvation. Let your life be edited by the gospel, amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the message you've given to us. May you truly continue to bless us that our life will be only for you, Father. May this way of salvation not just become a knowledge, but the very life of itself into our life. Help us be your witness in this gospel so that many people can truly come to the light of Jesus Christ and receive healing and salvation. We thank you so much. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.